Welcome. I'm Pastor Hank Kuhneman for Get Real with Pastor Hank, where you get the real truth, real prophetic teachings, revelation, insights, prophecy, and every once in a while, you might laugh. Actually, this is Pastor Hank. I'm doing an impersonation. I am imitating, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is being imitators, especially in a world where it's hard to figure out what is real, what is fake, what and who should we be imitating? Well, I want you to join me right here on Get Real with Hank, and we're going to talk and do a few imitations. We'll be right with you. Are you ready for real truth? Real revelation. Real prophetic. And really unpredictable. Listen, I think it's going to be fantastic. I think it's going to be absolutely huge. Get real with Hank. Well, it's actually me, Pastor Hank, and of course, I was doing impersonations. I don't want to leave a bad impression upon you. Anyway, you know, I grew up doing impersonations. I mean, I would sit in front of the TV, you know, as a young boy, and I would uh, draw cartoons, and then I would imitate the characters. I was always trying to imitate the voices, you know, from, hey, boo-boo, what do you say we get a picnic basket, Yogi Bear? Or maybe it was, oh, that trick never works, with Rocky, and remember, Bullwinkle, hey, Rocky, watch me pull the rabbit under my hat. Oh, that trick never works. Anyway, that one isn't as great, but then I watched sitcoms growing up. And I tell you, I remember watching, remember one of my favorite ones was Fred G. Sanford. You see, Lamont, all of this belongs to you, son. You can have all of this. That's what I say to my son, Matt. <coughs> then I also grew up watching, remember the old Edith and Archie Bunker? Uh, let me tell you what there, uh, Edith, why don't you uh, grab me one of those things out of the refrigerators there? Oh, yeah, Archie, just a minute. I got to tell you what, dear. You better hurry up, huh? Anyway, I grew up watching all of Rocky Balboa. Hey, how you doing? I mean, all you are is a selfish, lazy bum. Now, my favorite line of the Rocky was the one, remember when he fought the Russians? And I remember watching in the movie theater, and I was so impacted. It was at the end when he beat the Russian guy, and he goes, You know, before I came here, I didn't like you, and you didn't like me. But listen... People can change. I mean, that is a word today. <laughs> I didn't like you. You didn't like me. But people can change. I mean, that's a word for the body of Christ. If I've ever heard it today, people can change. And you got to learn to walk in love. Again, what are we imitating? Who are we imitating? And of course, you know, at one time I used to do over 100 impersonations. And I used to do a lot of the presidents. And you've heard me do some of those. But I'll tell you, not only this, but sometimes I do voices that, you know, isn't like a recognizable voice. I just kind of make them up. So I thought, you know what we ought to do? We ought to have some fun. But before I do that, you know, doing impersonations, I had relatives I found out that actually did uh, impersonations. And I used to do that in school too. You know, I'd impersonate the teachers. And one time the principal called me in an office and he said, hey, I heard that you imitate me. And I didn't know what to say. I'm like, oh no. He said, hey, why don't you do the morning announcements in my voice? And so I got to do that. So that was a lot of fun. But uh, I want to have Matthew, Matthew, my son, come up. And my other son, Jonathan, he does impersonations also. So Matthew, I want you to do a couple impersonations. You know, how about this one? Uh, Mike Lindell, you know, he's a friend of ours. All right, Mike, if you're watching, here's you, Mike. I think you do a better, Mike. Uh, okay, I'm... everybody. It's way All right, better. everybody. We're gonna. I want you to buy my slippers and my pillow, everybody. Okay, listen. We're gonna. We're gonna fix this, everybody. No, that's not as good as you. They've, they've taken our rights away. Okay. Taken our rights away, no, everybody. And, and listen, you know, we, we we've got the business my pillow, <laughs> but you know they're trying to cancel all that. So we've come out with a brand new thing called my quilts. That's right, my quilts, everybody. <laughs> okay, Mike. But also, those of you that are in Dallas, all right, Dallas, Texas, uh, you know who Jerry Jones is. All right, Matt, bring your Jerry and on. We do not like that team. We're so. a Green Bay Packer team. All right, for the sake of time, hear it. Well, personally, our guys, they've, um, you know, 
our Dallas uh, Cowboys, uh, uh, we're analyzing if Dak Prescott should be our future. And, uh, you know, I'll say uh, with uh, this team, uh, it's been <laughs> okay. disappointing. Nick uh, Saban, for all you Roll Tide, not the detergent, but the team. Go. Well, quite frankly, you know, I'm not going to get into who my starting quarterback is of the future. You know, whether it's Dalen Hurts, Tua Tagovailoa, <laughs> you know, you can give me any five-star recruit, and I mean, we're going to find a way to get a guy in there. And okay, make listen, plays. listen, Matt. This is Lou Holtz. Yeah, that's a wonderful <laughs> organization. Okay. <laughs> all right. I love you. We could you. go all day that's on these. so fast. All right, we could do it. We we could keep going on forever. <laughs> But uh, let's do something. So, Anthony, he's the other game changer. You just saw Matt. And by the way, if you haven't seen Game Changers, you can watch them right here on OVTV or OneVoiceTV.net. Game Changers with Matt and Anthony reaching not only this generation, but generations to come. And, yeah, the, the backwards former generation. I guess we're backwards, right? The generation that's my age. All right. Anyway, according to them, but really we are forward. We're very forward. The older you get, you become more forward. You get stuff in your craw. All right. So, Anthony, come on up here. Let's do this. So, sometimes we we imitate people. And I, I want to do this. Now, Ryan, do you have, I had a friend of mine imitate Joe Biden. Do you have that clip? I don't know if you have that clip. So, let me know when you're ready. Okay. All right. I want you to hear this. So I had a friend of mine call me acting like Joe Biden. Listen to this and then look for my Hello, response. Hey, Joe Biden here. I just wanted to tell you thanks for the mention from the pulpit last Sunday. You know the thing. Come on, man. Did great from the teleprompter. I really appreciate the mention. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, David, you're a wise guy. That guy's named David. But notice, listen to my response. So I called him back imitating somebody else. Listen to this. Hello, listen, I think you're fantastic. I don't think so about Rosie O'Donnell, but I think you're doing a terrific job. I think you're huge. I think you're wonderful. I'll talk with you later. All right. Well, we love Rosie. It's all good. I just had to say that because that's what President Trump would say. So I had to imitate that. All right. I remember one time with my good friend, Bishop Harry Jackson. Now he's in heaven today. And I remember when uh, uh, I imitated one day trying to imitate Pat Robertson. And I called him and he goes, is this really Pat? And I said, yes, it is. You know, I was doing Pat Robertson's voice. And he said, oh, sure, it's Pat. And next thing I know it, he hands the phone to somebody and there was a pause. And all of a sudden I hear, uh, hello, this is uh, Pat Robertson. Uh, uh, who is this? It was actually him. Anthony, I didn't do impersonations for like two weeks. I was, I was like wrecked. I'm like, what do you do? Here you're imitating somebody, not even realizing he's standing right next door to him. So let's do this, Anthony. You're a game changer. Let's call your dad and okay. see what would yeah. happen. Let's, let's, let's call Pops. All right. This is going to be good. We're going to pretend like we found his phone down in the construction site. Let's see what happens. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can. All right, here we go. All right, here we ready? go. It's ringing. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, hello. I uh, I don't know if I'm calling the right number. I found this phone out in the uh, <laughs> construction site, and I just called the number that came up on the screen. Um, <laughs> do you know who I need to get in contact with, the owner of this? I think I can, I can check the owner of that. There might be a reward for it, though. Who's this? <laughs> Whose phone is this? It's a relative of that individual's. <laughs> Did anybody tell you that you're acting weird? I'm just trying to get the phone back to the right person. <laughs> so where's it at? I'm sorry, sir. It's down here in the construction site. Um, I'm right here with uh, Harold. You're right with Harold? Yes. And I just I just called I just called the, the, the number. Okay. Okay. We can take it back into the into the building. Okay. Come down and get we'll it. We'll take it back in the building. All right. Les, this is Pastor Hank. Yeah, but I think. <laughs> Did you know it was me all the time? I, I kind of knew it, but you had me there to the end. I was like, okay, maybe it is. And you're actually on the live show with Get Real with Hank, so I got to let you go because I'm running out of time. Bye, Les. Bye. <laughs> okay. I think he knew it was me. All right. Thank you very much. Well, Get you, Real Pastor. with Hank. Appreciate now, here's why I want to say this. I mean, we are living in a world today where it is hard to know what is real and what is fake. But what I want to talk about is in a world today where there's a lot of imitation, 
okay, things being imitated. You know, I mean, is it really? You know, God said 46 doesn't exist uh, right on November 4th of 2020. Well, you can interpret that however you want, whatever you believe. But the point is, we are seeing a lot of things that just aren't it. And so we can get our eyes focused on all of those things, or we can get our eyes focused on something and someone that is the ultimate truth. It's what we need to be imitating. And it really needs to be how we need to to look at if we're looking for truth, if we're looking at something that makes sense. I wanna share a scripture, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what this is and who this is that we're talking about. In Ephesians chapter five, verses one through two, it says, be ye, watch this, imitators of God. We did impersonations, imitations today just to have fun. But ultimately it says we're to imitate God as his beloved children. Now, it tells you right after this, how should we imitate God? What's the first thing that we need to do if we are gonna imitate God? Come on, we wanna be his voice in the earth. You just heard me do voices. Well, you voice or imitate God, watch this, by walking in love. Now, walking in love is by demonstration. So you can demonstrate, you know, I can walk like Fred G. Sanford. I can walk like people imitating them. Well, there's no better person in our walk to walk like than God. But also walking in love has to do with our words. You heard me do voices imitating people, but you know what? I want to imitate God who is love. Love isn't just tolerance. Love, it speaks the truth in love. Love is, you know, looking at somebody and seeing them through the eyes of God. If they're not doing what's right, you love them to the truth. But I wanna talk about something. Notice, and we're gonna kinda play on words, it says, be imitators of God as his beloved children by walking in love. So there's what I call imitators. So some people today, rather than imitating God, they're imitators or they're imitating this. There's what I call agitators. Have you ever seen an agitator? This is an agitator. An agitator, is some who are not imitating God, and the voice that comes from them that they imitate is the voice of agitation. They're always upset at something, at somebody. They're always agitated about something. I mean, you ask them how their day is, and they're always just, just agitated. Well, I think we need to take a peeler and peel off that agitation and absolutely imitate God as his beloved child. So that's one uh, tater. Here's another one. Oh, the commutator. What's a commutator? Well, a commutator is those who always voice, okay, they're imitating our right. They're always voicing their opinion. They're always got to be a commutator. Now, and you know how they voice their, their opinion? They got these little things that stick out and they're called eyes. But in some ways, it's the people that always got to look on social media to make a comment. If the sound isn't right, here's what they do as a communicator. That no sound, what's wrong with your sound? Or here's what they do. If one of the social media channels that our ministry has no control over uh, starts censoring them or, or doing weird things, it's, hey, you guys need to fix such and such. Well, we have no control over you scared, for example. So you don't always wanna be a commentator always having a comment that criticizes, critiques, and has to have, watch this, the last word. That is the wrong tater to imitate. If you walk in love, the Bible says sometimes you gotta just know when to believe the best about things and about people. And love sometimes, shh, doesn't say anything. Amen. Enough of that tater. Oh, here's a big one. (laughs) <laughs> this one is a collaborator. And here's the problem. We're supposed to imitate God. That's kind of a weird looking. It looks more like this. You know, it kind of looks like a bird. See his little, 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 look at that bird. Looks like, looks like we got a pigeon or something. Where'd you guys get this thing? I mean, look, you see the beak, see the head and see his tail. Does that look like a bird? How many in here thinks it look like a bird? It does. It looks kind of like a bird, you know. No birds have been harmed on this program or ever will be. Okay, for those of you spotted taters, we wanted to protect your interests. 
Now, watch this though. This, this one is the collaborator. And they're always looking to plan something, collaborate something. And the problem is they always, rather than keeping things sweet, they wound up absolutely turning it into a rotten tater moment. Come on, you know those relatives that show up, they always got to collaborate, you know? They're going to control everything. And all you ask them to do is just bring the jello. Okay, and what do they do? They bring their three dogs, their two goats, their Uncle Eddie with the camper, and the kids are running around, and you're just trying to have a happy Thanksgiving. But they're the collaborators. They always bring trouble and take the sweetness out of the moment. Well, your job is to stay in love if you're ever around a collaborator. And the Bible says sometimes you agree with your adversary while he's in your way. While they're collaborating against you, sometimes, you know, that's why Jesus said, turn the other cheek. You know why? Because you you, you break the power of, of that. You give them the other cheek, guess what? It diffuses it. But here's the thing. Jesus was speaking. You only have four cheeks. And once you exhaust that fourth cheek, he didn't really say what to do after that. So we might need to seek God. Here, I'm going to throw this. So now I don't want to break a camera. All right, let's go to the next one. This one, oh, this is a wrinkled old one. This one is a mean tater. Doesn't he look mean? He's old and nasty and wrinkled because he's a mean tater. And the reason he's a mean tater and he's all wrinkled and all that is because all his life, he just sits there and stews. Get that potato stew. <laughs> How many of you in here got that one? Okay. Look at that. Like three people raised their hand. If you, if you got that, raise your hand. If not, just, I was trying to make a potato analogy <laughs> with stew. But anyway, this is a mean tater. And instead of imitating God as his beloved child walking in love, look at how wrinkled and look at, he gets a little bumpy here, you know? because he just sits there and stews and festers and it becomes mean-spirited. Have you ever been around somebody that they just, I mean, I don't know what it is about them. They are just so mean-spirited. You know, they're never in a good mood, never can say anything nice. Their outlook is always horrible, you know, and somebody did this to them and, and, they'll, and they'll tell you when, oh, you know, it was back in 1971 in the month of January on the 12th day. That guy pulled out in traffic on me and I've never forgiven him. Well, you know, that is too much detail. The devil is always in the details, they say. And, but there's people that are mean-spirited. I mean, they can't even go to social media and, and comment. Or even if they do comment, it, they, they, it, it doesn't carry the imitation, the voice, the sound, the manner of God in love. It, it it's always comes through a mean spirit. You know, when I listen to people sometimes today, I, I sit there and think, okay, it's not, it's not that I don't agree with maybe what you're saying or the position that you're trying to present, but I can't get past the spirit that's behind it. It's just so mean because it's a mean tater. How many of you ever met a mean tater? Well, if you're that mean tater, the Bible says that you need to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And you know what? Some of you, you need to start peeling back on that ugly, old, wrinkled, nasty, mean spirit. Well, how do you do it? Well, if I want to soften up this tater, guess what I do? I put it in some water, right? And I also boil it. Sometimes you've got to get in the word. Well, all the time you got to get in the word. Let the word begin to soften your spirit and your mean spirit. And then you know what? Let the Lord put some fire to you. Let him hold you accountable for your attitude. Hold yourself accountable for your attitude. But you don't want to be a mean tater. Hey, Matt, I'm going to throw this to you. Matt's off to the side of the camera. Look, he needs to learn how to cook. All right, Matt, here's an extra potato. I don't know if you know how to cook that. Just put it in the microwave. Poke holes in it first so you don't put a dent in your, in your uh, microwave. All right, right? He's laughing. Here's another one. A spectator. Oh, some people are a huge spectator. They are, they, that's all they do. They never get involved. I mean, here we got our nation, you know, absolutely the freedom's being taken from us. And we got pastors that are being spectators. And they are encouraging their churches 
to be spectators. Do nothing. While our freedoms are being stolen, while they would want nothing more than to create, are you ready for this? Churches that now have to give, you know, account to every single thing that they do, that they're now controlled by the state. In other words, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't stand for this moral truth, you can't stand for traditional marriage. I mean, come on, that's where things are heading. And it's heading that way because we've had so many spectators and not enough imitators. Listen, Jesus was not afraid to get involved politically. He said, go tell that fox Herod. In fact, when the disciples, Jesus asked him, hey, disciples, who do men uh, compare me to? Who do they say that I am? The first two people they came up with is, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. You know, those guys were absolute confronters. Look at Peter and Paul. They didn't just sit and spectate. They got involved in the culture, speaking out truth, preaching the gospel. They even got involved politically. You know, the Egyptian empire was smarter than a lot of Christians in their theology. Do you know they didn't have a separation of church and state? It, absolutely not. Why do you think there were 10 plagues? There were 10 judgments against the gods that the Egyptian government absolutely allowed. They allowed the spiritists, the magicians, and all of that to come in and be part of their government. And you know what? You look throughout the Bible, there were so many prophets and, 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 and different ones that went and spoke to the governments of the earth, the kings. But it's not just being a spectator that way, but it's a spectator when it comes to, sometimes we make our lives where we don't want to get involved in anything. We don't want to stand up for what's right. We don't want to do what's right. We don't want to speak up. Or we just sit back and we just let our life just live in lukewarm Christianity. That's another spectatorship that we don't want to do. So it's time to peel that and change. All right. The last one, this is a little one. This one I'm going to call a, a regurgitator. You know what a regurgitator is? This is the same old things. People just can never let things go. They just regurgitate the same old unforgiveness, same old bad attitudes, same old story of why life is unfair and this didn't work out and nothing ever happens and you know, and, and this ain't working and that's not working. And you just keep regurgitating the same old, same old. Well, God had to say to Israel because they became regurgitators after 40 years in the wilderness because of their complaining and their murmuring and the same old story and pointing the finger and accusing and blaming somebody. God said, all right, I got to stop your regurgitating. I got to stop it. You've been regurgitating around this mountain long enough. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. He said, change your regurgitation. Go take a roll aid, right? So you can get some relief and turn northward. Amen? And they did. And so if you ever want to stop regurgitation you and you get relief is you need to turn northward. What's that? Give your attention to God. Look towards the things of the kingdom of God. Again, be imitators of God. Well, how was Jesus? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. Well, Jesus was loving. You know, he was forgiving. He was a man of prayer. He was a man also that wasn't afraid to speak the truth and love. He told a woman that was caught in the midst of adultery, he told her exactly what she did, you know? But he said to her, sin no more. In other words, he brought truth in love and he held her accountable. You know, Jesus was such an amazing example of one and who to imitate because he always spoke the truth. There was no guile in him. He had no agenda. You know, have you ever met some people they have an agenda? Oh, it's why, you know, I have so many friends. They're probably like this many because there's, you know, you get a lot of people that the door only swings one way. It swings their way. Well, you know what? I love people. I'm here to help people. But at the end of the day, it can't always be about us, you know? And, and we have to be careful of that. We have to imitate God. We have to be like the Lord in our attitude and our conduct, our speech, come on, and even our beliefs. It's got to be according to God's ways and his word. So I want to challenge you today, rather than these old, mean, old, nasty taters that we described, what if we began to be a real sweet potato and we started sowing and acting love you know, you reap what you sow. If you, you want people to be nice to you, be nice, be a sweet tater. You know, maybe you need to be, you know, someone, you know, that 
you know, isn't just a spectator, but now you become a participator and you get involved and you get involved in a church. Come on, whether it be online or in person, you get involved in the word of God and prayer. You get involved in your community. Come on, you, you speak up, you know, uh, rather than regurgitator. Maybe you become uh, an absolute uh, prayer tater. Uh, maybe you become a, 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 a tater that, you know, absolutely, um, I don't know what you'd call it. Help me out. Audience, help me out. If they're not a regurgitator, what's the opposite of regurgitation? Uh, Hurry up. Quick. A what? How about a stable tater? I don't know. <laughs> Skip that one. All right. Here's this one. Maybe some of you need to be a self-controller tater. <laughs> In other words, you need to know how to, one of the fruit of the Spirit is being self-controlled. You want to lash out. You want to, you know, have words with that person that, you know, that little old lady that can't even look over her steering wheel when she's driving and you just got to let her have it. Hey, she's 98. For goodness sake, she shouldn't even be driving. Why add another distraction by you getting her to look over at you while she almost runs through a red light? So you know what? You just got to learn to let things go. Learn to let things go. Learn to have self-control. Don't always be, you know, quick to speak your mind and let everybody know your opinion. Brenda, if you're watching, you know I'm working on it. All right, now, here's the thing. How about be a forgiver-tater? You know what that is? Be a person that forgives. Come on. You know what you need to do if you have unforgiveness in your heart? You need to start peeling back the layers. And you know how you do it? Take Holy Communion, and before you do, you bring their names before you. And you say, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive him. You know why Jesus literally on the cross had to, he couldn't just think. He didn't say, and Jesus thought in his mind, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He didn't think it. He had to say it out of his mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when he spoke it out of his mouth, Father, and it wasn't just one time. By the way, that is an action verb in the Greek. It means he continually said it as they're pounding the nails in him. Come on. He had more mistreatment done to him than anybody but he kept speaking, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Well, I pray that you are blessed today. We went from imitations to being silly to bringing it right back to who we need to imitate, and that is God himself. I want to thank every one of you for joining me on Get Real with Hank. And again, this is the network, One Voice TV, that we cannot and will not be censored or canceled. And it's because of you faithful partners and you that give, that you make it possible for the many shows that are out there. So I want you to go out to onevoicetv.net and look at all the shows that are there. You're going to find Prophetic Pulse. You're going to find, we talk about prophetic things. You're going to talk about... Uh, Daily Decree with Pastor Brenda, New Level with Hank and Brenda. You, we've got other guests on there that you can go and discover. Well, I stretch my hands towards you and I declare the love of God overtakes you. That you not only love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, but you love your neighbors as yourself. And God's Spirit rests upon you to where you become such a sweet, loving tater that God looks at you now and when you ultimately stand before him, he's going to look at you, that sweet tater, and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done. Even though life tried to cook you, well done. All right, until the next time, it's Get Real with Hank. Let's imitate God. Let's walk in love. Let's speak the truth in love. And I'll see you next time until 